Hey friends, I'm Daniel Nesbitt, and this is probably going to be the most popular episode of this series. <laughs> Why? We're talking about kerning. Welcome back to Designing a Seraph in Glyphs Mini, and I'm sure this is the episode that so many people have waited for. Uh, in the last episode, we went and we completed the, uh, the Latin alphabet here, and in this episode, I had mentioned that I was going to talk about kerning. Before I jump into that, we're going to talk just a tiny bit about spacing, and then we'll jump into what everybody wants to know. Um, but the first thing that I want to point out before we get too far down any kind of rabbit hole is the more you work at spacing in any app, whether it's glyphs or whatever, um, the easier it's going to be to uh, kern your font if you even need to kern your font. Um, and so what I mean by that is... Throughout the series, if I just type in H and N a couple times here, um, so I've just got two characters uh, that are roughly the same, you'll notice that I've got a, a pretty decent rhythm going on here. And what I did was, because H is a, a pretty common control character, um, I set the, the spacing on either side of it to 50 units. Uh, what's great about glyphs, uh, either glyphs or glyphs mini, is that you can actually then use that cap H to uh, basically copy that that spacing variable to any other letter. So in this case, the H, rather than having two 50s uh, on either side here, uh, I actually typed in the letter H on both sides, so it automatically pulls in the H here. So if I were to go and do something drastic, let's say we made that 150, you'll notice that everything adjusts uh, automatically. Actually, I need to update my metrics. Now everything just automatically. Um, and all I'm doing is I'm hitting uh, control command M. You can also go up to glyph and update metrics uh, to get to that same thing. Uh, but you'll notice there when I'm on the N that the H on this side is now 300. So anyway, we don't want 300. We want 50. So I'm going to uh, update that on the H here. Just going to double click the N, update the metrics there, and now we're back to 50 again. So we've got a really nice spacing pair there. Um, unfortunately, there are times where you don't have that luxury, though, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type out some letters here. Awava? I don't even know if that's a word, and hopefully it's not a naughty one if it is, but anyway, um, sometimes spacing pairs just won't save you, and in this case, I have uh, the O as my, my kind of default spacing for these letters. Um, it just kind of worked for this one, at least to give me a, a starting point for these angled characters, but but it's clear that the uh, the M boxes here are going to have to overlap, and that's really where kerning comes into play. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, bring up my kerning window here, and right now there are no kerning pairs in this font. Um, it shows zero pairs here. And so I think I'm going to start with the A and the V here. Uh, and then I'm going to show a neat trick for the W. So, um, in that same line as the spacing pairs, and you, we, we have O here showing that I've got uh, 40 units on either side of the V here, there's actually a kerning box to, to each side. Um, and if I just pop my cursor in there, I could go and I could type in a number, and I'm just picking negative 200, which actually looks pretty close. Uh, I can do that, or I can use the up and down uh, arrows on my keyboard, and if I do it on the other side here, um, and I'm holding down shift 2 to go by 10 just to make this a little bit more obvious, but you can see that I can I can adjust that around a little bit. And as I'm doing this, uh, if you look at my kerning palette here, it's also creating a couple of pairs. So um, the left side of the V with the A, the left side of the A with the V, if that uh, keeps everything straight. Uh, and actually just to to make things a little bit different here. We'll go with 150, so you see there's a difference between the two. Um, so that's effectively what we've got going on here. Um, so to the, the right side of the character, the, uh, the right side of the A to the left side of the V is negative 200, the right side of the V to the left side of the A is negative 150. Um, but actually 200 was close, so we're going to go back to that. I might actually bump this a little bit more. Maybe just something like uh, 220. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm actually just going to create a similar string going all the way across here. So we're going to forget about this top line for a minute and just go down to this second line. And I'm going to pop back over to the V where we were at. And I'm just going to see... 
So now I'm comparing the space here to the space here. And what you can't see, I wear glasses, so this is a benefit that I have, but uh, effectively I'm just looking over the top of my glasses where the screen looks a little bit blurry to me and I'm trying to determine if this looks even, the AVAVA to the HN, HN, HN. And I know that's really technical, but this is honest, honestly how I actually do things. <laughs> Uh, and it doesn't look too bad, if I'm being completely honest. Um, I probably could bump it around a little bit, but I think, like, that, that 220, 230 space, I don't know, I think 240 probably gets a little bit too, too close. I'm debating if 220 might be it. It starts to feel too loose. Maybe 230 is my Goldilocks. And, and to be honest, too, I will caveat everything I'm about to say that I would probably come back to this over multiple days before I'd finally settle on 2.30. Uh, but for the sake of a YouTube video, we're just going to roll with 2.30. Um, it's, it's even probably fair to say that by the time this publishes, I will probably have changed my mind a dozen times about that value. But anyway, we've got a kerning pair. So, um, this is great and I would like to use this in other places. And so this is where magic happens. So similar to, so anyway, this is where magic then begins to happen. So I wanna create a kerning group here. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to assign this to a group. I'm gonna uh, assign each side of this V to the group A. And then what you'll notice here is those little locks unlocked, um, which basically means that this, if I were to adjust this, this is only gonna affect the V, which I really don't want. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna hit the lock button on that. And a couple things happen. Um, and actually the couple things are the same thing is that I get a little at and then an A and an at and an A. So it's tying those together as a group. So that's an A group now. So if I go back up to the W here, Actually, I should probably use the correct letter here. But um, but if I put that in the A group and that in the A group, now it's gonna start pulling just similar to what I did with the H. So if whatever this value is, is what this value is gonna be for kerning. And because the W and the V share the same geometry to the left and right side of it, everything looks great. If I ever wanna go back, now I'm updating a group value instead of uh, a pair by a pair. Uh, so if I were to go to here and let's say we made this uh, negative 330 just for the sake of making it drastic, um, you'll notice that the W and the V automatically do their thing. And this is one of the things that I love about Glyphs and Glyphs Mini is anytime you can group things if you have like shapes or anything like that, um, this makes it super easy to go and very quickly kern things. Um, because if I were to run into another uh, letter that would have this similar pairing, it's just a matter of assigning it to the correct group. Uh, another thing that I'm going to do is probably the TA. So for this one, um, I'm going to go off of the A this time, uh, just to change things up a little bit. And so what I'm going to do here is we're going to go through and we're going to find something that looks about right, maybe maybe 120. The the T is gonna be a little bit goofier to, to do and, and I just wanna be a little bit careful about how, how close I get here. So maybe negative 125. We'll um, make sure that I'm typing in the right place to start, but, um, but maybe something like that isn't too bad. Again, I'm just like backing away. I'm so glad I don't have a, a video cam on me because I'd probably look like a fool right now. But um, effectively, I'm just going and trying to get this as close as I can. Maybe actually 130 isn't too bad. And I'm really not picking 130 because it's, um, you know, a nice even 100 from the, the A. That's just kind of how things are working out right now. Uh, but that's fine. So what I'm going to do is, assuming that I'm happy with that, is we're just going to do the same thing again. So we're going to create a T group on either side. And then I'm going to go ahead and lock those values. 
Now, unlike the uh, the V here, I don't know that I really have anything, at least right off the bat, um, that I would apply that to. Actually, I take that back. One thing I probably could do is maybe one side of the L. Let's try it. Um, so for the T group, it's actually not too bad. So similar to uh, a thing like with, um, I'm just gonna jump over here real quick to the D where my spacing pair uh, on the left was H and then my spacing uh, value on the right was an O. I'm actually kind of doing the sim similar thing here with the L. So I'm saying that this side is fine, which I really think it is. Um, but then the other side where you've got a lot of the space here, I'm saying um, use the group uh, T here so that it, that it lines up a little bit better. And I actually don't think that's too bad at all. So I'd say we're looking pretty good. So effectively you could go through then uh, the rest of the, the typeface and uh, you know, current to your heart's content. Um, there's other things too, you know, you get into things like upper and lowercase. Um, so if I did just like the phrase TJ, 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 so on and so forth, I think, does it, uh, we'll do with that in a moment. Um, but again, I'm just going to do uh, this here. And for this one, we'll do the lowercase j. Um, I think for group T, again, I might just reuse it, uh, which is totally fine. Honestly, I'm a fan. Like, the more I can reuse things, the happier I am. Um, it just makes things so much easier. Uh, for something like this, I can't really use the T group for the lower... Well, maybe... So for something like this, I may end up doing a lowercase j on my t and then just kern it, uh, kern it in that way. Actually, I don't have that one. I have this one. There we go. So a little bit of kerning there, um, and actually I think we're actually going to bump this one off maybe a little bit. Um, 80 might be a little bit better there. That Those two things are kind of a little bit goofy because you have two similar shapes coming together and it kind of creates this, this weird space going on. Um, but I don't think that's too bad. So that's effectively a very mini primer on uh, kerning. I'm just going to uh, very quickly, I'm going to open up the um, the sample strings here. I'm just going to see if there's anything else. Because I am looking, there are things like the Q and the U here. Um, but I know if I kern that too close, then I'm, I'm going to have my serifs kind of running into each other. Um, I mean, the nice part is is that this typeface is somewhat modular, so I, I know that I don't have a whole lot that I've really got to worry about. Um, you know, it's it's got little pieces here and there where I probably could uh, go in and tighten things up a little bit, like the S and the E look a little bit close to the V and that kind of thing. Um, but again, this is like one of those things where I've got to be careful how far down the rabbit hole that I go. So uh, if I just type this out a little bit here, actually, I'm wondering. So this is an example that, you know, sometimes rather than kerning, maybe spacing might work a little bit better for you. And if I look at how the N and the O are spaced here, I, I think a lot of people, this is where I, you know, I'm guilty of it, that I might get caught in... Um, you know, maybe kerning the E and the V a little bit, but um, this might be a situation where I actually end up just respacing the O. Um, and I think what I'm going to do is maybe add add some spacing here instead. Um, uh, 
So sometimes that might solve it a little bit more. And then for the G, um, I think I might just go minus, not 15, minus 10. Um, so these are just things that, uh, make sure I get the right letters. Oops, get the right letters there. Um, but this might be a thing where I just, I kind of go back and just maybe respace some of this stuff a little bit. And it's, this is exactly what I was talking about at the beginning of the episode where uh, you just kind of have to play around with things a little bit because sometimes it isn't kerning, sometimes it's spacing. Uh, I will say on the whole that spacing is probably going to be a lot easier to deal with. Um, at least that's my take on it. But but I really try and save kerning for, for more of a last-ditch effort than, you know, something that I would go super wild about uh, as far as just creating pair after pair after pair after pair. Um, because this, this can get out of hand very quickly if you, uh, if you, if you want it to. Um, but I mean, those are just a few example, uh, spacing and pairing thing or kerning pair things that we're going through here. You know, it's, um, like I said, there's, there's things even like the A and the, the T here where, uh, you know, maybe I could go and, and adjust that a little bit. Um, and the thing with groups, too, is you could always call it AT. Uh, and if I lock AT, you know, maybe it's something like that. Um, so you I, I probably should have clarified at the beginning that it doesn't always have to be um, a specific letter. You can actually kind of name these whatever you want. Um, but it's usually good to be descriptive, as, at least as much as you can. Um, with the T over here... This is showing me negative 130, which I don't think I want. Um, we're going to call that TA. Actually, going to open that up a little bit more. And you know, maybe a situation. So, like, this is a a, a, a thing here where this flag on the A actually kind of feels like this closes up a little bit more. So it's not always. Um, you know, it's negative 130 on one side and 80 on the other, but visually it, it looks actually not too bad. Uh, but then there's things like this A and the E, which I'm not exactly sure there's much I could do about that. Um, you know, I, I would say I, I honestly was keeping English in mind when I was writing this out or uh, programming this, and I don't think too many people are going to be writing an A and an E in all caps next to each other. Um, I mean, that's just what I know about the language that I speak. So maybe there's there's times like that where I... Uh, I don't exactly worry too much about things like this. Um, but yeah, it's, I think, you know, it looks decent. Um, you know, if I go and I type in letters like this, or if I go back to some of my spacing pairs here, really this, this just becomes a thing about, um, you know, creating words, creating paragraphs of text, or in this case, maybe headlines for a font like this. And just seeing how things flow and the more that you're able to set this in text um, there are some great proofing docs out there I'm actually going to link to one below um, Huffler uh, and co created a um, oops. Uh, there's actually some amazing spacing docs out there and uh, Heffler and co actually created one um, and I'm going to put it up on screen here um, and I'll put a link in the bio or in uh, the video description as well but um, Jonathan Heffler did a great job coming up with all sorts of different uh, letter combinations, words, paragraphs, headings, you name it, to really kind of to put a, a typeface through the ringer and has graciously made it uh, open source. It's available on GitHub for free. Uh, if you have a copy of InDesign, you can pop it open. I know, um, I think he may have some, some plain text ones as well if you just wanted to add it to something like Glyphs uh, or you have a program that you use that isn't Glyphs or InDesign uh, that you prefer to use. Uh, so you can pretty much use it almost anywhere you want, but it's a really good resource just to really test different different things out, and really it it helps you know very quickly if you've got the spacing right. It helps you know if you've got your uh, letters designed correctly. You know, is is there a flow? What is you know, are there letters that look too wide, too narrow? Are they too thin or too thick? Um, we're always thinking about that as as type designers. Uh, so this this can be a really helpful. Um, resource. So, 
Yeah, um, I think we're actually going to go ahead, though, and call this a wrap on the Extended Serif series. This was a lot of fun, um, and truthfully, it was about having fun. It was about using a different program. I know my first uh, uh, series on here was in Glyphs, so I just thought it was a little bit uh, worth it to to really just kind of show off what Glyphs Mini is about. Uh, for the price point, I think you can see you can actually do a lot of work in this. It does limit you in that you only get one weight, for example, here, but... Um, really just a good solid app uh, and for 50 bucks you can have a little bit of fun so uh, hopefully you enjoyed the series if you did make sure to hit that subscribe button and if you haven't already uh, make sure to hit that uh, like button as well and as always thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next episode